So I really hope that this content is of value for you. And just in return, I would ask for you to hit the subscribe button, um, like this video, and the rest of the videos that are coming up. And well, I just, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being a subscriber. And I just hope this information is of value for you. I'll see you there. Hello once again and welcome. Now we are going to see the low emitting materials calculator. Exciting, huh? Let's jump right in. Okay, guys, here we are. So this is the low emitting material calculator. And as you've seen before, all of our calculators have instructions, the instruction tab, where we are going to input the information that is basic for this calculator to uh, run and um, give us the information that we need and that we are looking for, okay? So um, we are going to put the total amount of cost if the project had furniture, if it's interior, uh, commercial interior project, then you might have furniture. If it's another type of project, like a core and shell, it might not have any type of furniture. So it all depends on the project that you are working on, okay? And I know I say this all the time, but just remember, it all depends on your project scope of work, okay? Not all projects are the same. Not all projects are going to ask for the same things. Not all projects are going to achieve the same credits. So just remember that it all depends on um, the project that you are working on and the objective that the client has for his project, okay? So once again, you will, you will be using your units, which are uh, square feet or square meters. So it all depends what you are using for your project. So we are going to the tab of products. And products is the same as materials. So what we are going to do here is the same thing that we did on the other calculator where we put the whole list of the materials that were um, used for the project. And those materials will be placed here. Hold on. Don't copy paste, guys. Don't ever do that. Because these calculators use macros. And if you do a copy paste, it's not going to work out. And it's going to ruin everything. OK? So what you are going to do, all of the low emitting materials that you have already organized in your folders, neat folders of your project, um, get that all, all that information of th those materials and place them here. That's what you're going to do. So for example, all of the drywall, all of the um, insulation, all of the um, uh, flooring, um, adhesives, sealants, um, you will have of the uh, ceiling, you will have materials for um, furniture. If you have furniture, then you will put these, these, uh, this furniture in this list. So just make sure that you have all of that information gathered in one place, very um, organized and very neat. So once you have to put that information here, you, it would be a lot easier for you to um, manage that information because it's going to be a lot of information. So that's why I always tell you to be organized um, and have everything very, you know, in place and very neat and as neat and organized as you can because as I said before, it's a lot of information, okay? A lot of documentation. And we need that information and documentation to support these um, prerequisites and credits. Okay, guys, we can't get rid of that information. We need it to support what we are doing in our projects. Maybe someday will be a little bit easier and um, it would be uh, maybe, I don't know, QR codes or something like that. I don't know. But for right now, we are going to do it a traditional way, okay? So we are going to entry the data of the that information of the materials information right here. As you can see, we do have this optional right here. We have the material description as we saw in the other video, the manufacturer or vendor as we saw in the other video, and the category type. And it all depends on what you are working on and it all depends on the materials that you are using in your project. Okay, for example, if it's core and shell, then you might not be able to put maybe um, ceilings, walls, thermal, and acoustic insulation. Insulation you will have for your, um, for your um, 
roofing, but if it's a corn show project, you might not have maybe, mm, it all depends. In my case for warehouses, I don't have drywall. Okay, so it all depends the type of project you are working on. The emissions um, criteria, this will come in, for example, let me just show you real quick for paints and coatings. What we are looking here is for a VOC content. So that's what the option one is asking you for, okay? And if you are going through the option two, then it all depends on what you are searching for and what information you have of these materials, but you have multiple options here. If you ask me which is the easiest path to go about with this uh, credit, I would say that the easiest path is having the budget calculation method because there are a lot of inerrantly um, non-emitting materials that I have used, but that's me in my projects and my experience. So it all depends what you are looking at and what you have, um, what type of documentation you have for your materials and for your projects and what type of materials you're using for your projects. Okay, guys. So here, if you have um, non-emitting materials, then you would put that information here. Okay. The general emission evaluation, it all depends if you do have that information from the manufacturer. If your third party certification has the, H, the CDPH standard method, then you will be using that criteria or the other ones that the other options that you have here, it all depends on what you are working on guys. The TVOC, it's total VOCs uh, range that you have, you will be having this information in your third party certificates, you will see it there. So uh, you will see this information there, okay? We usually don't have any data. We need to know how many um, total VOCs our products have, our materials have, and what we are, um, putting and um, installing in our projects, okay? So once you have that information here, you will need to know what type of regulation um, it's being used for the VOC content, okay? And that information, you, you might have it in your spec sheet or your certificate or your HPD. It all depends on the material and the documentation that you may find for your products, as well as the product type. Once you have um, your regulation, for example, this one, you will be having this enabled to you so that you can check the options that you have here, for example, okay? That all depends what type of materials you used for your project or were used for your project. And this is information that you would be needing and you would be asking for to have actual uh, gallons or liters. It all depends what you're using for the VOC content. <clears throat> How many gallons of paint did you use for your project, for example, okay? And the same thing here. For composite wood, that's only if you did use composite wood. Remember that that type of wood needs to have a non-urea formal dehyde, okay? No urea formal dehyde. Just check your, um, your credits requirements. So you'll know a little bit further and a little bit more about this information that the credit is asking on these type of products and this type of materials. For the furniture evaluation as well, you will be able to meet any of these, I'm sorry, of these criteria. I usually work with furniture, um, Hermann Her Miller, which use NC BIFMA, and they usually do um, comply with the credits requirements. For exterior applied products, this is only for schools. Okay, here it goes. Schools and healthcare only. And this is if you want to provide 
any URL of the product information, MSDS, or any other information that would be relevant for the reviewers to check up for this, these type of products and materials. Okay, guys. So the results, you will be looking at this right here. If you're complying with option one in the interior paints and coatings, you will have this um, turn into a yes, the same here and the same here. So once you go to your summary, it all depends if you're going um, with path option one or path option two, it all depends what you are working on, okay? You will have these here instead of no's, they would be yes, because you are complying with the threshold, okay? And once you have those as yes, you will have um, a guided uh, information of one and each of the um, materials, okay, that you're using for your project. Okay, types of materials. The same thing happens here with option two. You will have your final summary here with your floorings, with your ceilings, your walls, your insulation, furniture, and exterior applied products if you're working with schools or healthcare. So once you have that information, you will have your, um, your results here or here. If you ask me, I would always use um, either option one or option two, it all depends. As I said before, it all depends how you are working with in your project and what type of objectives and documentation it's available to you. Okay, guys, so this is it. Go ahead, if you are working on a project right now, then you can start using these calculators and be checking how your projects are going. Even if these projects are not um, looking for a LEED certification, you can check up on these projects and you know, and maybe even have that as a plus in, in, in your project and say, you know what, well, this is not a, a LEED certified project, or maybe you weren't considering having this as a LEED certified project, but look, I've been looking at this, I've been doing this, and I really think that it might be working and you it would be suitable for you to have this project certified. So it all depends on what you guys are working on and how you guys are working with it, with this information that is given to you, that the, with this information that is placed there for you. Okay. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for bearing with me. I know this was the longest module, as I said in your in your um, in your email that you received. And I know all this information is 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 very valued by you because I mean, tell me guys, really. I mean, I really do have this intrigue. Is there a program exactly the same as this one? that explains everything step by step so that you can go ahead and do that out there. I haven't seen a program like this one and I'm really doing this by the heart. So I really, really do appreciate your feedback. I really, really do appreciate you having here. And um, I think it's not, it's not uh, enough for me to say how much I am thankful for you guys, okay? I'll see you guys next time. Okay, guys. See ya. Namaste.